During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk a little bit about drift retardants <laughs> when farmers are spraying because it's a really windy day out here and no farmer should be spraying on a day like this when the winds are blowing 20, 25 miles an hour. But we want to talk about when winds are blowing, let's say, 8 miles an hour or 10 miles an hour. Legally, a farmer can spray. He probably is going to need to spray under some of those conditions from time to time. But we want to talk about how farmers reduce the drift that ends up occurring when there is some wind and they're spraying. Well, there are a few different things that farmers can and do with their sprayer all the time to try and uh, deal with some windier conditions. Because you know how it goes. You get out there spraying something, and all of a sudden, here comes a gust of wind. And everything gets going that way, and you say, man, I've got just a little bit left in my tank I gotta finish up. So there's a number of things that you can do. First of all, what I would suggest as you get a sprayer set up in the spring, is have multiple tips on the sprayer. What I like to have is a triple nozzle body at least, maybe even a five nozzle body, where all I have to do with one quick little click is you can just go right down the row and click the different spray tips. If you have tips that produce bigger droplets, obviously bigger droplets have more weight. They aren't going to be blown as far off target. So you get tips that don't have those fine little particles that can blow for a long ways. I guess that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is use some products to influence that spray to try and get it to stay on or, where you want yeah, it to Yeah, or you could do both things. You can switch tips and you can use what we would call a drift retardant. That's our main topic here. What these drift retardants do is they basically make the spray droplet bigger. Now, there are several different types on the market. There are the old types. They were called polyacrylamides. The problem with the polyacrylamides is we would have pump shear, so the more that they would run through the tank and run back through the pump with the agitation, the less of the drift retardant was really left by the time it got sprayed out maybe half an hour later out in the field. Well, they're, the they're, other problem with the polyacrylamides is they would just turn into jelly sometimes yep. in, the, in the spray tank. So you put them in there and maybe depending on the chemistry or depending on the water or how much of that product you used, it could be really a mess trying to clean that stuff out of the spray tank. So our dad used to say, you know, I don't care what the label says and how much you're supposed to be using, don't put near that much in, just put a small dose in, see how it works, if you feel comfortable with that, you can try putting a little bit more in. But a lot of times, if they said to use a pint, you could get by with half a pint or maybe even a quarter pint and still get the job done. There are products called lecithin products, and the lecithins are kind of interesting. They're actually natural products made from soy. If you look at a candy bar label, for example, you'll see lecithin well, even... in there. And then the newest product out on the market is what we would call the HPG polymer. It's in products like Array and Border and those seem to work the very best on the market. So those are your choices out there. The polyacrylamides are cheap. The HPG is the most expensive. That's the way we go on our farm when we need a drift retardant. Well, the thing I like about the HPG polymers is you can buy it either in a premix uh, like Array where you're getting the ammonium sulfate right in with it, or you could buy just the straight HPG polymer in something like Border EG250, where it comes in like kind of a milk carton looking container, and you can be out spraying. And say you get out there and there's just a two mile an hour wind. You think, wow, it's just perfect. Nothing's blowing around out there. And all of a sudden the wind comes up a little bit. You have a little bit in that spray tank left to get out. All you have to do is have this little milk carton container of that HPG polymer right in your sprayer. You jump out, you throw a little bit in for the rest of that tank and you get the job done. You get the tank cleaned out and you're done. Because farmers don't want to have uh, anything left in that tank at the end of the day. All that happens when you have product left is the viability of that product goes down. Maybe some of it gets tied up with the water. The other thing that it does, many of these products, especially things like Roundup, are very good tank cleaners. And if you've got a poly tank, you've got some pores in the tank, and that product could suck in some chemical that you sprayed last week. Okay, sounds like a topic for another so show, wanna, dear. Let's get, get back to the out, drift retardant Just thing. use some of that drift retardant <laughs> and get your spray tank done. <laughs> so again, the reason why we're talking about all this stuff is farmers want to make sure that they are not having any of their spray end up on a field or on somebody else's property next to their field. They want to make sure it's staying in their field. So if they're spraying in slightly windy conditions, not nearly as windy today, but slightly windy conditions, either they'll switch spray nozzles or they can use a drift retardant or both to make sure that they're keeping the product on target. And the reason we're talking about this today is because weed control is so important, especially if you have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 